here's the wheel and um, we've got three tools that we need for sure. You need your rib tool, your stick tool, and your pin tool. You don't need anything else. I really don't want you to throw with any footing tools, anything that's sharp. There's a big loop tool, there also is a little loop tool. Don't throw with those, okay? They're sharp, I want them to stay sharp. So that's what you need. You need a little bit of water. You don't need very much water, just a little. You need a little sponge and some big sponges for cleanup. If you're throwing on a bat wheel, the bat wheels have pins, and you need a bat. Not all of the wheels are bat wheels. And you just set it on there like this. And make sure it's down. The top side of the bat is rough and has a texture. The bottom is smooth, okay? We're gonna throw a cylinder today something that's just round and straight up and down. All our projects that we make basically start from cylinders, okay? So you're going to start with a round ball of clay that you wedged a little bit. It should be just about this size. It'll fit in your hands. Some people have bigger hands, some people have smaller hands, but so it should be somewhere in the size of an orange. Not, not a cantaloupe, okay? We're going to put it on the wheel like that and smush it down. It's important to smush it down. Okay? The wheel goes two ways. It goes right and left. If you're right, you make sure you turn it on. If you're right-handed, it's got to go through your right fingers like that. So if you're left-handed, it's going the wrong way. Okay? The control directions is here. You can see that would be the wrong way. Okay? How many of you are left-handed? Okay, so everything I do, you're going to have to do in reverse. I know it's hard. Okay, so we're a little bit off center now. Our first step is centering, then we're going to open, we're going to compress the base, pull the wall, deal with the top and the base, okay? So let's see if we can keep the steps straight. So we've got a center. You can see it's not quite centered, right? Some of it sticks out. My goal is to take the part that's sticking out and move it up. So to do that, I'm going to take my left hand and push it in this way. I'm going to put my elbow on my knee and push in like that. To keep it from coming off the wheel, though, I'm going to push down a little bit like this. My right elbow is going to be compressed into my body. Some people will have it in their knee. It depends on how flexible and how long your arms are. So I'm going to push in. I'm going to kind of go medium and then go faster and faster. I'm pushing in and down. And what's happening, you can see, is what was sticking out here is now sticking up. Okay, does that make sense? So make sure you have water, and I'm pushing in, and it's coming up. Now I'm going to lean into the clay and push down at the same time. It slid a little bit there, and I didn't have it nailed on a bit of fat well enough. But fortunately, I was in control. Okay, so I'm pushing in and down, and it's starting to come to center. Notice my hands are like this, locked in together, and this is kind of round, and this is kind of round. So I'm ending with a pretty round shape. I keep the clay wet all the time. And again, this comes in like this. This hand comes in like that. Okay, now I'm going to cone. Some advanced students don't cone center, but if you don't cone center, you don't wedge the clay, you don't make it smooth, and you're not doing yourself a service. So make sure you do this. Don't say, oh, Miss Adam, you don't have to cone center. Well, it's a good plan. So I'm pushing my hands together. Look, my thumbs are really pressing, and my hands are going like this and getting tighter as they go up. I can feel the pressure here. You should feel that. And I come up into a cone. Okay, not a tower, but a cone, so it's pointy at the top. Clean that off a little bit. I'm going to press down again. My hands are like this. This hand's going in like this. Same idea, basically. You can also grab your thumb and just push down. And push down again and make that center, okay? Then you can take the big sponge and kind of clean it off. Put it into the ring or into your bucket. Okay, we're going to cone again. You cone three or four times, as many times as you need. Get it right. Okay. One thing you can do is just clean it off with your hand or your fingers so you know you're centered. Push it right back down. One thing you want to do is, is when you finish centering, make sure you're pretty low. 
one thing advanced students do is they tend to open too high. And that's not an advantage to you. I can feel the pressure of my elbow on your knee. You should always feel that. Okay, so now we're centered. We're going to open, step two. So I hold it like this, like I like it. Oh, this is so nice. Not like this. And I just dent it. And it's not perfectly centered, but it's close. That's good. Put a little water in there, and now I'm going to go like this. Place my hands like that. L, and like that. You can go ahead and try it. Hold the clay with this hand, my helper hand. My elbow's still here. And just drill. And I'm going to stop and measure it with my pin tool to make sure it's about the right depth. It should be about half a pin tool. If it's, you've gone too far, you really can't fix it, you have to start again. If you have not gone far enough, you can always go further. That's the only time I'm going to stop the wheel. See, this has already made this little edge here, so I'm going to hold my hand like this and press it down. Again, that's something that advanced students tend to forget, but it's a good idea. Now I'm going to open. I'm putting my hands back in that same and I'm pulling towards myself, not very far. Again, it's pushed up again. I'm going to push it down. Okay? That's the position for pushing it down. See, my thumb's just like this, and I'm holding it like that. You'll experiment and get some of your hand positions that feel more comfortable for you, but your hands will always be working together. Now I'm going to compress this. I take my sponge and my dominant hand, brace my wrist with my undominant hand, elbow still braced on my knee. And I'm going to push down and just make that nice and flat. Okay? And make this part flat. So I've got kind of like a donut or bagel shape. Okay? Make it clean. All right? Now we're ready to open. I mean, we did open. We're ready to pull up the wall. Now I'm going to hold my hands differently. This hand goes like this. This hand goes like this. And I cross my thumbs. And I'm going to go like this and bend. Your arms are really flexible, and so are your wrists. So you can take your arms straight out and fold your wrist down. You can go ahead and try it. <coughs> and just go like this. Kind of kiss each other. They like each other. Okay? So this is going to go at 3 o'clock, right there. Now I'm going to go medium, not fast, but medium. Right there, and this hand's going to go over it and lock. These hands are, these fingers are just sitting around. Put a little more water in there, lean over, make sure you're always leaned over. Your nose is right in the center. You're using your core muscles in your ear, but this part is just leaned over the top of your body. Okay, and I just grab that clay, and I pull up, and I get to the top, and I just let go. Okay, if it's weird up top, I can just compress it with my sponge. I start here and compress like that, okay? and recompress the inside if you need to. What a lot of new students do is they get to the top and they pinch, and that makes a mess. It, you don't do that. It's like if you hit a baseball, you don't stop the moment you hit the baseball, right? You have to keep swinging through. So when you throw, you know, I gotta fix this first. I'm just compressing it. When you throw, you have to follow through. So you pull up, 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 and then you just keep Pulling as though something was there, even though it's not. Every time you do this, get the excess water out. Notice I'm bracing my hand like that. Okay, at this point we have a volcano thingy going on. I don't like that, so I take this and it's I take the claw end of my stick tool. See, I mean you can scratch things with this, like you're an X-Man, and I take away some of that clay. I make a little nick. I used to have a student named Nick, and then I grab it with my fingers. See, it's undercut, so I can grab that with my fingers and then pull up. I'm just using those two middle fingers. Other fingers are guiding, and I pull up. And see, the clay rises. Very handy. I don't want to use the whole side of my hand. If I do that and try and pull, it always goes off center. I made one. See, it's already a little wonky just doing that. So don't do that. You can pull with a sponge if you want. I like to do that. It keeps it nice and moist. You can pull with a rib. You can pull with your knuckles. There are different ways to do it, but it's a one-on-one -on -one point. Just like that. I have a little shake, but that seems to be okay. Okay, so now it's pretty much thin enough, 
And again, we just want to pull something straight up. Everything else we make, we're going to make from this shape. Balls, faces, whatever. But it's, it's a little high on one side and a little low on the other. So we're going to trim it. Every time you trim, you run your left finger here and you bring the pin right in like that. Notice my thumbs position. Always have to have your hands touching each other. Okay? Come and yell at you if you don't. This is a little off center. You can see one side's a little thicker than the other. Oh well. Life happens. And then I lift off. That looks better now. Okay? Now I'm going to compress. It runs through this finger first and I'm going to take the sponge and roll it just a little bit. This will make that lip round so glaze will stick to it and so I can foot it. If I want it to flip out, I just push out like that. I want it to flip in. I do the opposite. Just like that. Okay? I just want it to go out a little bit, I guess. Keep this clean. Notice I'm bracing my hand. Okay? Now I want to trim this up. So I'm going to take this like a pencil. This is a handy tool. Remember, it's always an extension of your hand, these tools. So I'm going to use my hand so it's a nail here. I've got to brace it and I'm going to jab it into the clay. This is going to be in line with the side of the angle. I'm just going to cut in like that. Okay? Just cut in like that. And it, it kicks a lot so you really have to brace your hand because the wheel has half a horsepower in it. So it's like half of my little pony I like to say. Okay? You go all the way to the wheel head and then stop. See I've cut all that off. That's handy because when I'm going to foot it tomorrow that means I don't have to mess with that. I'm keeping track of my tools. I don't want them in here. If they go in here, they go in the water and they go in the mixer. That would be bad. Particularly if it's one of these. Okay, I'm going to cut through the clay once and then I'm going to go around in a circle. I'm bracing my hand and trim this off. Bingo. That's nice. That's going to go here. It's going to go back in the mixer. I'm going to go back to the stick tool. I'm going to hold it towards myself like a snow plow and I'm going to get rid of this extra clay. I'm going to trim it again a little bit like this. Just a little bit and that's pretty much it. Now I have a cylinder. Okay. Now I want to make sure I can separate this from the bat. So I'm going to put some water in here with a sponge or my hand and I'm going to take a string tool. You're going to have to share these. There are not a ton of them and they do wear out and pull straight through. Be careful you're pressing down parallel to the bat so you don't get a bad cut. It's easy to do if you're not paying attention and it makes a huge difference. And then see, that's a good cut. There's not much clay left over. I'm going to wipe up the extra water and you can, if you like, write your name in the bat and the period number, and that way, well, you'll know it's yours, and if you don't clean it up, I'll know it's yours, okay? If it's Friday, you want to put a plastic bag over this and put it in the locker, okay? So there's our cylinder. Um, you can clean up here, largely right from your bucket, clean up this, you can wash your tools in the bucket, pretty easy, see it's got my name on it, you can wash up this. That will save you a lot of time trying to crowd in there, trying to clean up your stuff if you just clean it up from here, okay? All right, so now you've got it.